Hi everybody, my name is Nina from Croatia and I'm coming from an organization who is dealing with workers' initiative and democratization. I will present you with uh, one and only example of, let's say, closest to the self-management, uh, worker self-management that we have in Croatia after the fall of uh, socialism. Uh, so, uh, I have to say, I'm a bit, uh, I regret that uh, one of the workers is not here, but it's because of the language uh, barrier. He would be probably, uh, I mean, not probably, definitely better choice than, than I am, because he also has this entertaining uh, moment, and I don't. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so... Uh, uh, ITAS uh, is a machine tool factory and it is located in, uh, in the northwestern Croatia. Uh, once it was highly uh, industrialized uh, region, uh, but nowadays it's, um, uh, it is uh, pretty much deindustrialized. Uh, it was famous for its metal in the, uh, industry. So, uh, ITAS was founded in 1961 and it was a part of a larger, um, larger company which was at the time the sixth uh, biggest uh, machine tool companies in the world. It was employing around uh, 900 people. Uh, in 1990, uh, when, uh, when, the, when the fall of socialism happened, uh, Prvomajska uh, Itas uh, uh, lost its uh, Russian market and a part of significant part of Yugoslav uh, uh, market. So it separated from Itas separated from uh, Prvomajska. Uh, so and entered in a privatization process. Uh, in Croatia, uh, we had. Uh, few models of privatization, but the most famous is voucher uh, privatization, uh, which meant that uh, the shares of companies were first uh, given to uh, workers, so they can turn them uh, they can turn them into the shares of ownership and also to the uh, war uh, veterans. But it, it was common uh, case, especially uh, in the manufacturing industry. Uh, these shares was soon, were soon taken over by uh, political tycoons who were interested in uh, selling uh, uh, factory assets, infrastructure and, you know, uh, taking over the land to, to, to sell it again. So basically in uh, 2001, uh, the major of the city where the factory Itas is located bought 75% of the whole shares and opened a sister company which served only to extract uh, the capital from ITAS and she transferred all the factory assets. Uh, the critical point for the company happened in 2005 where the um, management of the company decided also to physically separated the company from, from, from the production. Uh, so the workers uh, started to revolt. One of the reasons was of course because the company assets were transferred uh, and the capital was extracted. Another was that uh, they were, uh, their salaries were laid for more than eight months. So this was a case for a uh, series of hunger strikes, occupations, blockades of the, uh, of the roads, and, and so on. Uh, the thing is, uh, I'd say uh, uh, this was uh, probably the, the favor, sort of favorable uh, condition uh, for, for the workers that uh, uh, they had, so the salaries actually, uh, um, the salaries were uh, made uh, more than half of the total receivables of the company. So workers uh, decided to uh, declare a bankruptcy, which was also a desire for the management. But the management wanted the bankruptcy to close the production down. The workers uh, declared bankruptcy, they found, uh, they found uh, one guy who was, uh, was 
name bankruptcy mm, direct, director no what was the name Statue New Brighton bankruptcy manager okay so they found um, a bankruptcy manager who was uh, who was willing to uh, to take them through the process of the bankruptcy uh, and they actually managed to uh, take uh, to turn the receivables uh, into the shares. Uh, so this is how a uh, self-management uh, system was actually introduced in the company and it took eight years, I think in uh, 2013, they, uh, after many lawsuits, they uh, managed to uh, take uh, back all the company assets that were uh, that were, uh, uh, you know, in the in the other company. Um, okay, uh, I wanted to say some things that I think they are important in in, 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 in the process how it how it's going on today. So uh, first, uh, I think that it's also important to uh, uh, notice that the, this whole uh, occupation uh, and self-management introduction was uh, taken uh, exclusively by the workers. So the metal union that was uh, present uh, didn't provide any help because they didn't have membership fees. Of course, if the workers don't get their salaries for more than eight months, they cannot participate in the membership. So this was probably uh, a reason for the metal union uh, not to uh, engage in their struggle. Uh, therefore, only few individuals were uh, from few shop stewards were present, and they opened the new. Uh, new union and we are we have two people from from my organization they are now volunteering uh, in this union so this was the only union help uh, uh, for the workers at the time um, today they have uh, 365 owners of the uh, company and the owners are board both present and the former uh, uh, workers and uh, uh, the main decision-making uh, body is, well, I don't know how to translate it in English, but I will try to uh, describe it. It's Cooperative Commission, and it is consisted of shop stewards, members of the Workers' Council, and the management of uh, each sector of production. Uh, so the commission itself is a bridge between the board uh, of shareholders and the management board, uh, but it is directly, uh, the management board is directly under the influence of the commission. So let's say that that's, that's kind of attempt to build a democratic decision-making pro process within the company. Uh, also, important thing is that the uh, uh, workers uh, decide that the, uh, almost all factory profit turns back into production. Another important thing, for, especially for this region, is uh, how the social reproduction of the region, of the region is maintained. Uh, the company uh, decided to uh, uh, introduce uh, two, two uh, school courses, uh, which, are, uh, which are there to um, uh, educate young, young generations uh, in order to, uh, you know, uh, uh, to provide them uh, know-how for working in the in, in this uh, industry, of course, when you, in, in the industrialized countries such as Croatia, for instance, in 2012, the industry uh, the industry uh, ratio, uh, production ratio was at 75 percent of the 1990s. So you can imagine uh, that there are no schools anymore for uh, for uh, these cutters. So this is also a very important thing. Uh, do I have some time or I... Okay. Uh, also, uh, um, as you, as you uh, mentioned that these are kind of uh, questions we would like, we need to discuss in this chapter, is of course question of financing. Uh, in Croatia, more than 90% of the whole banking uh, system is privatized. So of course there are no um, there are no uh, uh, um, banks uh, which would provide inadequate financing for for uh, companies like that. 
but uh, we have some new initiative uh, which is called uh, Cooperative for Ethical Financing and this is the first, um, first such attempt in Croatia. The idea is to establish the first ethical bank in Croatia in order to provide financial help uh, for uh, companies like that and also to provide them uh, to provide them financial aid when workers are buying uh, shares or when they want to recuperate uh, their um, their uh, companies so um, uh, okay maybe, maybe we should then leave it there are some things like um, I think it's very important I, I think that Marina mentioned it uh, the building trust and uh, you know this is kind of uh, things that we usually don't discuss that much because they are not uh, tracked probably from the theoretical point of discussion but I think that um, practices of building trust are um, if nothing the most important thing in uh, in uh, carrying out the process once when the company is uh, rec recuperated and when you introduce some uh, models of uh, workers uh, running uh, their companies. So, thank you.